This new paper by DeepSeek that just got released a few days ago is likely, very likely, how DeepSeek R2 will be trained. And DeepSeek V3 is currently maybe the most intelligent non-reasoning model. And if you have most intelligent non-reasoning, you can also have most intelligent reasoning model. So I wouldn't be surprised if DeepSeek R2 is even better than the latest Google's model, Gemini 2.5 Pro. There is a big difference that this paper shows in how to train a reasoning model. So until now, you could only train it really on mathematics and coding because you can check if the result that the reasoning model gave is correct only in mathematics and coding because there are correct results. But what if you want to tr uh, train it to make better poets, poetry, essays, uh, other stuff that are not, that they don't have correct result. This paper introduces a new method that solves that. So they have, besides their model that they are training, they have a lot smaller model that's a judge. So this model is producing results generating and this judge is picking the best results and telling it which ones are good, which ones are bad. They will soon release this judge, open source it. It's very small. It has only 27 billion parameters. And you can use this not just to train DeepSeek R2. You can use this to improve uh, performance of any model, not just during training, but also during inference. You can literally uh, use GPT and generate eight examples and use this judge to select the best example. So this can help not only with training reasoning model, but also with uh, inference, just by picking the best example. Here they are showing that their setup, their model is best at judging the good response. So they are comparing against all of these. So for example, this is a model that's specifically trained to be a judge, to judge the results. But they also use these uh, plain base models like Gemini, GPT, uh, whatever, Llama, and they just prompt them to judge the best results as well. So it turns out their 27 billion model that's fine-tuned uh, performs better at the judging results than a prompted uh, GPT, Llama, and all of the other models. And even the models that are explicitly trained or fine-tuned to, to be judges. This is a very easy method to increase model performance by a few percent on benchmarks. And few percent is a lot more than it seems because companies usually need to train whole next generation of the big model, biggest model, bigger model to get a few, a few percent improvement. So this is just training a very small model a lot faster and it works across all of the LLMs, not just the one that, that you, you don't need to pre-train every single one. So uh, let's check how uh, their method improves this model GPT-40 and this Gemma. And it's crazy here, we got improvement of almost like uh, 10 points or nine points right here, which is crazy. So this is the one, this is their method. So the second row, let's look at that. And here we got like one to 2% here also, but this is 9% improvement right there. This method can be used in two ways. The first way is during training, uh, you let it choose the best answer out of all of them and it's gonna choose the best answer 90% of the time so 90 so that's very good so that's how you can uh, train the model that you are training to reason better by having by knowing which answer it produced is good which one is uh, bad and it's very accurate in that and another uh, usage is uh, during inference you can just generate for example 8 or 32 outputs and pick the best one according to uh, with the new model that they are talking about this was co covered by my camera so it's 57.3 so this is how it works let's say we have a base model it can be in the training or in inference doesn't matter so base model will have some task prompt for example uh, write an essay about uh, chemistry and it will produce what some number of essays some number of uh, outputs, for example, eight essays or 32 essays. And then we will use their model to select the best one out of eight. And this is how their model, uh, GRM, it's called GRM, General Reward Model, works. So it takes a look at the prompt and the outputs. And then it generates these uh, principles. It's like criteria for scoring. 
and so it's gonna generate custom criteria for each task so for history essay it would be like historical accuracy um i don't know in instruction adherence level of detail etc so these are more general but it would create custom for each prompt and in the same generation this grm just continues uh, then it looks at its own principles and then continues analyzing based on those principles so this is the same call same generation same context window just continues no interruption and so it says okay it's thinking uh historical accuracy maybe this good this good this good this is not good and it's at the same time looking at all of the responses at once and it's gonna say okay response one has this mistake but response two doesn't or essay two doesn't have this mistake so in the end it's gonna uh, give uh, final scores so essay two essay one gets two points essay two gets four points and this is the funny thing you will actually run this grm multiple times so multiple times you will take entire prompt and essays and run it through the grm and in the first run it will create one set of principles analysis and scores in the second run run this grm for this uh, it will take the same like the same uh, prompt and essays and then generate different set of principles and then it will just have multiple principles so you see here we have principle one principle two um and then you yeah yeah so this is the one set second set and there is more sets it's unrolling and then this can be for example the last set of principles and in the end it will give you a bunch of different uh, scores so i forgot to mention they made the scores i think uh, one to ten or zero to ten i don't know which one doesn't matter uh, and in the first run let's say first essay gets two second four and then six one and then two seven so there are two ways in which you can calculate the final result you can just add up all of these scores so this will be um, 10 out of 30 for the first essay and it will be how much 12 out of 30 for the second essay and that's how they pick the best result but what showed uh, proved to work even better and this is funny you have another very small model another separate so this is the third in the pipeline and this very small model uh, this will just be trained to look so this will get initial prompt essays critiques scores everything and it will choose uh, which scores uh, to disregard and which scores to keep so maybe some uh, maybe some of the principles are badly written they are not good they are inaccurate they are not good principles so for example here uh, you see that the first essay turned out to be better than the but these two say the second is better so this new model sorry uh, let's scroll down so this is this is what i'm explaining actually i didn't see this here so uh, let me just quickly reiterate so we have a query and a bunch of different uh, essays and then we generate principles uh, for each essay and then analysis based on pr principles and final scores so all of this is uh, one uh, response and then we have these rewards for each of the essays and so one option is just to vote so we add up all of the scores one five four seven here uh, and uh, this is 25 out of so you pick the second essay but it's even better to have another uh, train another small model and this small model will choose which principles to ignore because maybe it uh, finds that these principles for example at the second one are bad they're not actually good principles and uh, these also at the bottom are bad principles they're, they don't accurately reflect and then judge this uh, prompt and uh, responses so it will disregard those two worst principles and then just sum up the best principles so just to make it clear 
we have three models in the pipeline. The first is the model that generates response to the query, generates essays. Second model is what they train in this paper. It's to uh, write principles and, and then according to those principles, write a critique and uh, scores. And that's all in one go, one prompt, everything in one context window. And the third model is optional, but it works best with this model. This model will learn which principles here to disregard. And then it will just sum up scores of the other ones. And you can say, for example, in this meta reward model uh, to disregard half of the worst principles, worst. So if we have four, it should disregard two worst. There are also uh, two very good ideas for continuing this research uh, to do different research. It's uh, using tools. So they didn't use tools, but that's another future research idea. And uh, this is only evaluating uh, uh, outcome after the essays have been written. But uh, what if you use this to evaluate like each paragraph of the essay and pick the best paragraph and then the next paragraph, pick the best paragraph. So that's called process reward model. So this model is outcome reward model, but you can also transform this into process reward model, which could be one of the future uh, uh, future researches. They say that their model, this GRM will be released open source soon. So they have two steps in training this uh, DeepSeq GRM. So first of all, it's uh, built on top of Gemma 227B. And the first step is uh, rejective fine tuning, I think, yeah. So here they just take label data, so um, some query and uh, output that's good and output that's bad. And they train it that this output is good and this output is bad. So this is just uh, reinforcement learning, supervised learning. And in the second step, they use GRPO. So this is self-supervised learning. So this is similar to, you know, the, the how, G, uh, how R2 was trained. And I'm not 100% sure if they use also labeled data. I think they are using also labeled data for this GRPO second step. So this image shows, first of all, 16 billion uh, parameter model works worse than 27B and uh, their additional meta reward model that's gonna drop half of the bad principles is better than just adding the principles with all of the principles without dropping half of the worst principles. I think that's it. Just these math formulas, I think they're not actually too complex. I didn't uh, dive deep, but I think they're not complex. You can watch coding deep CQ3 from scratch on my channel. It's for complete beginners or coding a Llama 4 from scratch. It's also, uh, both of them are three and a half hour courses. You will understand so much about uh, creating your own LLM from scratch.